Welcome back everybody to the second part of my let's play and let's learn to play uh, Endless Space. In the last video we ended up uh, finishing our research on the uh, applied casimir effect which allowed us to go and uh, traverse wormholes between constellations. And we sent our scout through and he immediately got killed by someone else. Back to oh, okay, we didn't actually discover the other faction whose ship that was, but and it might have been a pirate as well. That's a possibility. I think there are pirates in this game. Uh, I think I remember reading something about that. Um, so let's go ahead and start research on something else. <coughs> I do kind of want to do some start uh, some more military going toward the military, uh, the galactic warfare tree, because I've kind of been focusing over here to get Casimir effect in order to go through these wormholes, but now we're going to start encountering civilizations, uh, rather factions, and I want to be, want to make sure if they are hostile that we'll be able to defend against them or possibly even attack them if they're weak enough, and we have enough research power to start churning through a bunch of these, in fact, we could uh, get some kinetic black defense. Let's see, we have advanced machining, which is better missiles. <coughs> and let's see, we have deflector defense module. Now, kinetic weapons are close range weapons. Missiles are long range, and then lasers are the medium range. And it looks like, oh, well, this is interesting. This is uh, a, a defense module, and it has 100% accuracy on one missile per round. That's pretty good. Uh, now this, I guess, it looks like each, well, almost each node on the tech tree has two, two technologies that. Uh, will be researched and maybe their offense and defense but it doesn't look completely like that it, it might be <coughs> so we have we could either go for kinetic short range or long range I think I want to go for long range right now because the last time I played I was having difficulty with that plus it's only one turn so yeah let's just go with that we'll close that out now is there anything else don't believe there was much else we could do. We did lose our scout, so I think I have. Okay, we're d we're building a defender over here on Sylph, Sylphie. All right, let's end the turn. <coughs> okay, so we completed our research in one tr one turn. Now let's take a look at what we can unlock now. Okay, we have a star system improvement. Plus six ship XP when you build it in that star system, and it costs two dust per p turn. And star system, another star system improvement for plus twenty five defense. So this is good for system defense. Um, or we could go with <coughs> a few better weapons and defense. Let's just go with that right now since it's only one turn. Not a big deal. And so that's done. And we finished our planetary exploitation on Way. So we'll go into Way. Let's see what else we can do here. The ships, we don't have a lot of production. So let's actually go ahead and improve our production by building the heavy isotope refineries. And we do have these resources, we have three here, and that is from our, the this star system tree over here. All right, looks good. Let's dismiss that. And one other thing I wanted to look at was, I guess we, I noticed in the last video that I was seeing you could expel uh, a hero. And I'm wondering if you have three and 
a hero is going to come, will it add to that or will, do you really need to expel? Because I'm wondering why exactly you would expel a hero at all. Do you, I mean, do you gain another hero when you expel automatically? Uh, in fact, I want to give that a shot. I'm just going to, these guys are both the same. They have the same stats as you can see here. So I'm just going to expel one of them and see what happens. Okay, so we just lose him, and our enemy can recruit him. Maybe the enemy has access to... Well, it wouldn't... Oh, that's strange. I'm not sure, you know, logically why you would uh, expel like that. But maybe you have a certain amount of slots that you can uh, occupy later on in the game. Okay, let's end the turn now. ships we should be able to i would think we could see well we might not be able to see ships right because our sensors over here are the sensors for um your planets and your ships are shown by this little hazy circle so if i had a ship i don't have a ship oh wait i do have a ship actually so our defender was built last turn let's actually create a fleet for him let's select him okay he is selected i'll show you as he's going and i want to put him over here now you can see, you see that little hazy um, halo around him is the sensor range, which is the range at which you can detect other ships. So he has nine movement turns, and this is our defender. to add some plating, some more hard kinetics. I, I believe we modified that in the last game. <clears throat> right, so we need to build something on Silith, Silthy. There's not much to build. We might just end up going with, how's our dust? We have plus 25 per turn, which is pretty good. So we can afford, we actually, let's build, a, actually let's, I want to modify. I want to make sure our scout is as fast as possible. I'm wondering. So you can see our wep our additional weapon modifier over here. In fact, we might want to upgrade. Um, so we have two hard kinetics right now. Let's go with two more. So that was. I just want to look at the cost. It was. Si it's 63 now. So let's go with the lesser one. So it does cost more, but you get more uh, firepower. You can see it's one accuracy, two critical, three damn, uh, three max, two min. This one has ten. It has a much better critical chance, and everything else is just about the same. This has more projectiles per salvo, and I'm not sure. Th I'm not very familiar with the combat in this game right now. Uh, it's a lot of it is got, uh, done behind the scenes, uh, but it'd be good to know exactly what what numbers go into that off-screen calculation. And once we get into a better combat situation, I'll go over exactly how combat gets played out. It's pretty interesting. Um, I know the last time I got into combat situation, it was, you know, it was a lose scenario. I was gonna lose no matter what. My scout had no chance of winning, so I just did an auto resolution of the battle to get it over with. Plus I was toward the end of the, uh, of the video anyway. So I'm gonna, See if I can slap another engine on here. Um, this is a scout, right? Yeah, so layered hulls give us more pro kinetic projectiles deflected per round. Um, 23. I should be able to fit it on there. I'm wondering, maybe you can only have one of these per, per ship. Let me actually just... No, you can. Okay. Oh, I took it off, that's why. Yeah, I think you can only have one uh, engine per per ship. Uh, you can't put a whole lot of engines on. So we'll actually reset that. And I do want to get rid of those two kinetic modules. Add two here. We could, inc we could add a bunch, but again, this is just a scout. It just needs to be really lo uh, long range, have a little bit of... Uh, 
damage reduction. Um, we could add, yeah, I, I want to keep this as simple as possible. Um, what's power do? Yeah, that's, that's for max, min max for your damage. We could add some health. But again, if we get into a battle with this thing, we did something wrong. In fact, I'm going to reduce. I'm going to take out that. We'll leave those on there, I guess. What do we really gain? Not much. We lose a lot of um, military power. I'll just keep those on there. All right, so let's apply that. And do we really only have... Yeah, we only have our defender here. So let's go ahead and build another scout takes care of that queue. We've got isotopes over here and isotopes over here. We do have another planet over here we can colonize, but we do need a colony ship for that, so I'm going to hold off on that. We did complete the isotope verification. Yes, so we gained those two, and we can now, let me look a little further. We get some better, this one has uh, a better damage max ultra dense slugs and you get nine projectiles per salvo but again it is kinetic which is right up close so i might want some mm, and then you can see also i was looking this is a beam a laser beam weapon module which is the medium range attack and the ranges will make a little bit more sense once we go over combat but you can see it requires that resource hyperium which we don't have access to because it is red and Okay, these modules. It looks like... Okay, not all of them require a certain uh, resource, but th this one did. The ion torpedoes required titanium-70, which we had access to from Treem. Over here, Treem 1 has three nodes. I believe that's what the three means. So... There's just so much to go over. It's hard to kind of look forward, and I haven't played much of the game, so I'm not completely aware of what I should be going toward. This is a little bit better for, um, oh wow, that's interesting. A lot of in plus 120 invasion military power. I'm not sure if there's, I'm not sure if there's a different mechanic for when you invade planets either. But I would assume that modifier has uh, has something to do with it. I think what we'll do... These are some star system improvements, I think. Let me actually look at some of these one turn. We might want to just knock out all these one turn just to get them. Yeah, this is nice. Xenotourium tourism agencies increases dust on all these strange t planet types air tundra ocean terran and jungle well i guess it's not really strange they're just you know if you think of it as tourists want to go visit them i.e xeno tourism and we also open up all these luxury resources which we will be able to access that hydromio yeah let's just go with this why not let's not spend a lot of time debating although you know this, I was thinking about this in my last video and when I started uploading it, it's like there's not a lot going on here, but I mean it is a 4x game, so there's a lot of strategy, there's a lot of thinking, so people watching this video, I would assume kind of want to see that and think about, you know, what to do next and what I'm thinking about and my logical progression, as it were. And if that's not, what will that happen? If that's not true, then, you know, just comment on the video, let me know. And there was some good comments, uh, some good reception from the last video. Uh, I posted it on a couple of Reddit sub, uh, sub, some subred subreddits, and got some good feedback. So that was great. So what did we? Oh, okay, right. These are all our resource discoveries because we just finished research on xenobiology or xenology, rather. Let's actually go knock out. Soil xenobiology. That was what I was thinking. The xenobiology. There's lots of xeno stuff. Xenobotany, xenobiology. 
Uh, let's just knock that one out. I think we'll just knock out all the one turn ones just to say we did it. And we also have our hero, our, our Sylphi manager leveled up. And, uh, let's take a look at Sylphi uh, to see what we can improve. They are content. Some strategic resources. The population is going up slowly but steadily. So we can balance director. I was told I was told that about um, improving the uh, approval in our star system very early on is very important, especially since we're going to be expanding pretty quickly. We do get. Plus 25% production, that's pretty good. He does have 80 to go there. Let's just go with, yeah, Minister of Propaganda 2 there. We can, yeah, ecstatic. So that, that might even be better. See, we get now, yeah, we get 4.8, plus 4.8 production from system approval, plus, plus 4 here. We get plus 5.2. Do we get anything from here? No. Okay, but that's just that's just not how it goes. Uh, but that's cool. That's they are ecstatic. That's pretty much as high as they can get. Ninety-seven point five. That's pretty damn good. Uh, so I think we might be good on that front. Once we get, I'd really like to get another uh, hero as as a good star system manager because you can see Way is pretty unhappy because of the whole plant minus twenty from planets, which is interesting. Back to Sylphi. Did they have minus 20 from planets? They had minus 15 from planets. Okay, so it might be affecting this guy. Possibly. Okay. So we took care of that. Let's resolve our movement turns. Now this guy still has three left. He is a defender. He's got a military power of 83. I don't know what's over here. It is neutral, but that just means anybody can attack. Yeah, why don't we just send our guy over here? Oh boy. Okay. And it looks like it's pretty evenly balanced. This is a good time for us. Okay, it is pirate. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, we're gonna go with manual, and we're just gonna do some very basic attacking here. Now, basically, what happens is. I should have probably prefaced this, but there's five phases. There's an arrival, and then long range, medium range, melee phase, and then a, the final stage. So basically, we get to choose like these strategy cards per phase, per attack phase. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go. Oh, whoops. Okay, I'm a little bit slow here. Actually, we're we're killing them pretty well, or they have low health at least. Basically, in battle, a lot is predetermined based on your, the attributes of all the fleets, and a lot of that gets taken into account behind the scenes and calculated out. Then you have this nice cinematic. I might need to turn on the sound here. See if I, no, I can't. I'll fix that later. We actually, uh, basically, <laughs> I'm trying to trying to explain all this while it's happening. Um, Basically, in all these phases, we're playing a strategy card, and it goes up against what the other players were playing, and we just we just defeated them, so that's good. We did lose half of our health, but that's all right. Once we get out of this, let me try to explain combat a little bit better, and also gonna turn down the music because that was just terrible. Okay, so we did have a uh, victory. We lost a little bit of health, like half our health, but we defeated them. We did 417 health damage to them, and our kinetic efficiency was 49%, and their deflect efficiency was only 75 So this is a, like a little post-battle report here, so we'll close out of that. And I'm wondering about, I don't know 
much about how health regenerates. But let's just keep our defender here for now. That was pretty good, and then we'll send our scout up to look closely at the other places. Basically, the way combat works is, like I was saying, there's five. Actually, let me turn down the stupid audio. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So basically the way combat works is there's five phases. There's the initial phase where the ships are getting into position. Then there's the long range attack phase, the medium range attack phase, and the short range attack phase or melee phase. In long range you use missiles, in medium range you use beams or lasers, and in close range, melee range, you use kinetics. And so all the different attributes on your ships go in, their, you know, their attack and defense based on all those damage, those three damage types are calculated and a bunch of calculations are done behind the scenes, but you get a nice little cinematic battle to look at. But during each of the three attack phases, you get to play for, uh, out of these battle, you get, it's basically a card game, a card battle game. You play a card and the enemy plays a card and they have, each of them has a, like a main attribute or main type they are. So this one is a defensive card, offensive card, engineer, sabotagers, etc., etc. And they counter the like the opposite. So a defense would counter an offensive card, an offensive card would counter tactics, etc., etc. So you can get into a situation where a, you or an enemy will play a card and then you or the enemy might play a card that'll oppose it. Um, and so you get kind of like a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing where you can cancel out a card. Um, but if you don't, if you play cards that don't cancel each other out, um, then they, then everything goes through. But basically, if the card doesn't cancel out, get canceled out, then you get in that attack phase, you get the attributes modifiers here. So for example, in defense, if you play this defense card and it doesn't get blocked during that turn, it's a magnetic field, which means you get plus 40 deflector efficiency, which and block plus 10, and minus 20% beam damage, block plus 20. Uh, if you do offense, you get some kinetic damage, uh, and but you get negative 20% anti-missile interception. Um, I'm just trying to think of how that would be, when it would be a good phase for that offense. So we get better kinetics, but we get minus 20 to anti-missile interception. Minus 20 to anti-missile interception. So we get plus 20 missile interception? Is that what that, an like anti-missile? I guess, well, anti-missile interception. Hmm. Sorry, I just, I'm just trying to read through these things and make sure they make sense in my head. Um, so like an engineering card would be plus 20% HP repair. And I'm not sure what each of these has a block. Um, oh, I see. If the card gets blocked, or maybe if the card does block, yeah, I think if you, mm, I should have probably read up on this. I'll, I'll do a little more reading up, but I'm thinking maybe if this card blocks a sabotage, then you get an additional 10% or something like that. Mm, I, I should probably read about that. Let me not speculate. Or if somebody wants to clarify, just leave a comment. Some of them are pretty simple. Uh, retreat would be good if you have <coughs> a scout, for example. It'll end the battle. The enemy w will win, and it'll deal one deals one up unopposed damage round. So you can't get into battle and immediately retreat. You have to go through one, at least one uh, round of damage, and it'll be unopposed. But it is unblockable. So actually, it might have been a better uh, tactic in my last game if I had gone in with a scout, done a manual, and then played immediately my retreat card here. And um, you can your heroes can also add you can add more you know action cards. Uh, I don't know if they're researchable if they're through heroes. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research on that. Combat is definitely my the least I know about in the game so far so I'll, I'll definitely be learning about that but it's basically just a a lot of the combat is done behind the scenes but you get you know you get little if if the battle is very very 
even on both sides, these cards could be the difference, which is really cool. And they give you pretty cool effects. And we'll come back to that later once I know a little bit more. Sorry, I'm trying to just kind of speculate. And I might be spouting complete horseshit, but it's interesting. I like trying to figure figure things out for myself. And I don't want to just kind of open up the manual while we're playing here. Okay, so I think that's it for that turn. Let's close out. These are the longest, the longest turns ever. I do apologize. Okay, so we got soil xenobiology, which opens up a system improvement, and uh, that exploitation for Terran type planets increases, and we can also use this on ocean and jungle, which is nice. And just to be consistent, oh, this is nice. Well, it's, it's kind of nice. This is a good for science. And this is the uh, applied sciences technology tree anyway. And it's only one turn, so I'm not really concerned about, you know, beelining toward anything. In fact, I don't know a lot of these things, and it'll probably take me a lot of games to, you know, figure everything out. I don't like to, like, just kind of sit down and look at everything. Because especially with here, I mean, there's so many technologies. I don't want to just kind of go through and go, oh, okay, 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 okay. This has this, this does this. That's just really boring to me. I like to kind of play through it. And if I make a mistake, then, you know, I make a mistake. And if there's a better strategy, then, yeah, there's a better strategy. But, I mean, is it really worth, you know, s wasting? Or not? I guess not wasting because some people do do it and it's not a waste for them. But, you know, I would have to spend so much time doing that. Now, we did get a new ship. We got our scouts, we're going to send them up to explore the systems past here. And you can see the scout has much better sensor range, and that's because our scout has... Where is it? It doesn't show up on here. Let me go in here. Long range sensors right here. So we get plus four to sensors on our ship, which is good for a scout. Our scout is fast and light. He has a lot of movement points. Well, he has nine, which is as much. I think that pretty much nine right now is the fastest we can get. And we actually might want to look at something. Yeah, this is um, lossless fusion pods. Plus three on ship, plus one on fleet. Okay, maybe that. Because I remember there is movement where it's like plus on empire. So maybe now you get plus on empire then plus on ship and fleet as well i'll have to experiment with that a little bit and there is a search feature i don't know if i type in like engine okay that, that keys off engineering engineering that seems integrated engines okay yeah that's way way down the line um let's see here because I was, I was hoping we could, we might just be able to type in, you know, engine, and we would be able to see all the nodes with an engine in it. But the icons are pretty unmistakable, and it looks like they're all in the applied sciences tree. There might be a few up in the military, maybe. No, military looks like it's mostly just those defensive and offensive modules, and a couple of support modules, a couple of star system improvements. Yeah, I don't really see any engines up here and I doubt it would be uh, on the di diplomatic and uh, trading over here yeah okay so we have that going and let's close that we finished our what did we finish wasn't that oh, maybe that was last turn huh. did we not queue something up that's unfortunate no we actually we moved them out that's right okay um Alien grafting. Okay, that's cool. The once we upgraded that exploitation on a research panel, it automatically upgraded it here. So we have a lot of more food coming in here. They're still ecstatic. And we do have let's see, our dust could be a little bit better. It's not bad, plus twenty two per turn, but we might wanna if our systems start getting unruly, we're gonna have to lower the tax rate. So let's just go with Xeno tourism for now. We're still chugging away over here and over here on our on our heavy isotope refineries. And we have this defender. We have a, a c 
couple of stars. Okay, so we have one warp, uh, one wormhole over here to another constellation, and then three paths within this constellation. I don't know if the constellations have names. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm wondering how big this map is as well. Huh. Let's go explore this red dwarf over here. We should be able to reach it in one turn. Yes, we do. And it's we actually didn't look at this. Let's take a look at this system first of all. So we have a jungle, desert, barren, and tundra. We can colonize the jungle and the tundra. We have hydromiel again. Uh, it is, they're all small. One's tiny, okay. Mostly small, tiny, medium. We have more titanium. This is good. Um, we might want to go for this right uh, away. We will colonize this planet as the first one in this system because we will have an abundance. Uh, right now we have three. This will give us two, which is five. That will be above four, and we'll get minus 30% per industry cost on all the modules using that. So, for example, if we go back here, uh, we can see that... Which one used this? I think. Da -da -da. Here we go. Okay, so, for example, these ion torpedoes require titanium 70 and they cost 4.2 so they would cost minus 20 percent of that which is great and are there any others and i think that was the only one but obviously there's more that have yet to be researched but that just it decreases the total cost of building that ship in the first place or total produ uh, industry cost and again the hydromial is very good as well for food on our planet and our empire as a whole and we have three there and i think we have at least one here yes we do have one so that would give us a monopoly which would be very very good so very a lot of possibilities going on here and there's also some uh, wow every planet here has a luxury resource or a strategic resource mercurite I haven't seen this one yet. It looks like it's dust and science, which is great. And we get plus 40% ship experience on Empire. Now, I think... I'm wondering how that works. Yeah, that's something. I'm just not sure how the plus 40 is. That means when you build it, it has 40% more XP to start out with. Or does it gain 40% more uh, when it earns XP? I'm just unsure of that. If you know, leave a comment, because that'd be really cool. And everybody else would know that as well. And the Void Stone, again, is good for dust and approval and healing on our empire. And, of course, if nobody comments on my video, um, I can still, you know, kind of read the manual, as it were. Hopefully the manual is uh, informative in that way. So let's take a look at Antares. So we have an uh, asteroid built. Uh, medium irradiated there's actually I didn't look at the okay we have some good okay no this is a bad anomaly <laughs> minus 10 approval oh but it okay so it's kind of a weird kind of in-between anomaly where we get more science but we get le uh, less approval minus 10 on the planet mineral rich has got to be good yeah that's really good for production this is going to be I think our next target for a colony ship and we haven't really encountered any other civilizations right now, so I think we can cool it on trying to build up a military. We have one scout and one defender. That should be enough to look around and see, see what's going on. We also we have a large asteroid belt. I assume you can probably... Hmm. I didn't even notice the... Uh, the planet types have an effect on our fit, our industry, dust, science, and then approval. I didn't notice that. That's interesting. So tundra is better. I wonder if that. I'm wondering if that's a base. Those are base stats, or if those are modified in any way. But anyway, and I'm wondering if we can colonize eventually at large uh, asteroid belts. We probably can. I w uh, they wouldn't, you know, just put it here for show. But we do have a medium ocean with some hydromiel again. That seems to be very popular in our section of the galaxy. We have uh, dust ruins, which is good for approval and dust on uh, this tiny tundra. 
planet, which we can colonize. We have a small asteroid belt with a very bad uh, anomaly. Some pre-schism uh, artifacts, though. Bio bonus. Minus 30 bio bonus. And I think the bio bonus is if you want to, if you have something in the queue, uh, that'd be the amount of dust you need to purchase it on the next turn. And proto orchids are good for approval and plus 10 percent fids okay so that's plus 10 percent to everything our food industry dust science okay pretty cool all right do we have any movement points left we have three left i'm gonna stick within the constellation for now and go over to this binary star maybe tatooine is over here over there or something or something we took care of that all right we're good Wow, these tins are surprisingly for the l amount that's not going on these turns are taking quite a long time but you know i am talking so that probably has something to do with it okay now we have encountered another faction first contact our hand shaking a tentacle reminds me of something japanese pilgrim's empire and that's just a game event for we are not alone for our first contact and we now have isolation shields which unlocks public private partnerships hmm. look at that again oh a star system improvement oh okay gotcha yep okay so what do we want to research next First of all, we want to get the hell out of there. <laughs> That's the first thing. Let's go back over here. Because I've done this before. And actually, let's open up some communication channels with this guy. Let's look at him. Okay, he's neutral. Stable. Score of 179. They are the pilgrims. They can evacuate a solar star system. They start with Xenobotany. They are rebellious, diplomats, optimistic, legendary heroes. Ah, okay, less upkeep, more hero XP. Mutual understanding, oh, that's pretty cool. Plus 10% damage max and min per number of allies on fleet and weapons. Interesting, these guys seem to be more of a diplomatic economic um, civilization that's an interesting un that's that's interesting the more allies they have the better their max and min and max damage is hmm. Hmm. blockade breakers yeah that would indicate in uh, economic so they trade routes also work in cold war or at war and blockades on your system won't break trade routes so they're completely impervious to blockades it looks like and wasted space minus 20 percent tonnage on ships that's yeah it definitely seems like these guys are more diplomatic economic so they might not bother us as much and we might want to get into uh, some kind of alliance with them so let's uh interesting they there used to be a phone symbol to indicate opening up communications but it looks like they've changed that all right i don't know if we really have a lot of options we might want to look at what we can do let's actually close these two screens out and open up and look at yeah let's see what we can do so yeah let's this relativistic economics will unlock a ceasefire and offer peace diplomatic options and it will also plus one trade route cap on our star system and that's a star system improvement so that'll increase our trade um, and that looks like looks like all the diplomatic actions might be indicated with that shaking hand yeah I like that they've made oh wow I don't want to do that uh, okay I like the how they made all the icons for similar things uh, similar I guess 
that way you can kind of pick them out so for example all the kinetic weapon modules or these shells all the flak all the kinetic or flak defense or missile defense are these little missile interceptor trucks missiles and stuff like that it makes it kind of easier when you're kind of scrolling along looking for something so you're not just kind of re you don't have to read and tooltip everything which is pretty cool but i do want to go for relativistic economics here so we can make peace with some civilizations so we don't get our asses handed to us too early in the game and let's see we have zero to nine there and zero to nine there take a look at this one this is all set all right let's end the turn all right so we completed our xenotourism oh boy Oh, they're attacking us, but I like you guys. Oh, we got one scout. Where is he attacking us? Oh, really? I thought you guys were peaceful. All right, let's go into manual. We'll, we'll see about that retreat card. Maybe we can see a little bit more of the combat. So they do have two ships. We are immediately going to retreat. Retreat. We're just going to put retreat for everything even though it should automatically work in the first first phase. I'm wondering, we do have a scout ship, so I'm wondering if they'll be able to take us out with their missiles right away. So they're, us they're using engineering and we're using, okay, defeat, yeah. it's Our retreat is listed as a defeat because we retreated, obviously. We're getting the hell out of there. We get a report. So yeah, nothing. Actually, we. <laughs> it's funny. We actually did nine HP damage to them, and they did nothing to us. It's funny. But we got the hell out of there. And where do I retreat to? I think this is me retreating. Not completely sure. But that's just odd that they. I thought they were peaceful. Hmm. Well, we are. It is a cold war, and they get no penalties for attacking us. Besides, you know, the fact that we don't like them because they're a bunch of bitches. Hmm. Oh, I think this was our scout. Yeah. So we retreated over here. This guy was heading in this direction. And let's not upset them. And we're just gonna. I think there's a reason. I think I might have read this in a tutorial, but there's there might be a reason why we can't move our ship here. We can attack, but we can't move, even though we have movement points. It might be because we are. That's so weird. Hmm. Well, we'll keep our scout there for now. Actually, we could kind of explore a little bit more. Let's go over this binary star. Okay, that's cool. Let's take a look at the system. We have a lot of colonizable planets here. We have three Arctic, and then we have barren planet, which we cannot yet colonize. Uh, we do have a bad anomaly here, poor soil. And we have cyber flora here, though, which is good for our approval. And again, we have hydromiel here. I'm wondering if that's just kind of common with all the games, or if that's just with our game. And they're all medium, except for this large one. So, and this large one and this medium one have moons. We also might want to look into researching that uh, that moon ex uh, moon research thing. I don't, I don't, I can't remember the name of it. Okay, Silphi finished its uh, its system improvement there, and we're still doing good on our approval, which is great. Now, let me actually, I want to know, okay, yeah, Adaptive Colonies was that technology to do a moon expedition. Okay, let's start churning out, let's actually, I want to see if there's, let's see, Destroyer, yes, this is going to be our next one. 
efficient shielding, which gives us a new ship class of destroyer, which allows us to put more weapon modules on our ship. We get minus 20% tonnage for weapon modules. Uh, it does have a multiple role. It's interesting that it is, well, I guess, exploration and expansion. It's strange that the weapon module uh, tonnage reduction class, ship class, is in <laughs> exploration and expansion. But if you're going to expand, you're going to have to go through factions eventually. And it looks like that's the only ship class down here. Yes, probably the rest of them, or at least most of them are up here in our military tree. I'm just looking around. Again, I'm looking for that distinctive icon. Maybe not. Over here, maybe? It might be a different icon as well. Hmm, maybe it's a different icon. Well, this looks like a ship. What about this? Nope. Hmm. Is there only one more class? The one right there? That can't be true. Huh. Well, anyway, that'll be our next target. Uh, so we took a look at that at here. H-I-R. Can we move yet? Uh, that's right. We haven't ended that turn yet, and we don't have any more turns there. We do have... Oh, yes, we do need to. That's right. I wanted to turn out. Uh, this is only two turns, two turns, five turns. Right now, I think my main priority is protection of my star system, so I'm going to go with uh, Defender rather than going with the colony ship right now, which would be good, but we need some kind of protection as we're doing this because the until we sue for peace with these guys, they're just going to attack us because automatically you start in a state of Cold War. So they're just going to attack us. And that Cold War means there's no penalty. Uh, if I hover over this. Well, that, that's what it means. There's no penalty. Let me see if I can get a better description. Yes, you share a Cold War status with this empire. Your territories cannot be attacked directly, but skirmishes are possible in star systems not owned by either of you, which is what happened in Gaikon here. It's a neutral star system. You see, Esther over here is owned by him, and I think he might be able to attack us if we go there, um, and he doesn't provoke us to go there. If we just go there of our own accord, he might be able to attack us. I'm not sure if that starts war, though. I could have swore this happened in the last game I played, but that would be contrary to what it says um, the Cold War is, which is you can only skirmishes are possible in in star systems not owned by either of you. Well, we'll see. I'm sure we'll get to that point eventually. Uh, I think that was the end of the turn, so or at least that's good for now. finish up our research and, and since we just talked about it we'll move directly into oh boy he's attacking us again yes we need to move a paladin which is great for kinetic and yeah these guys are, have a lot of attack power for their kinetic and deflect power well I guess early on in the game that's really all that you have. And is this gonna be auto? I hope not. Oh, son of a bitch. I wanted to retreat. Shit, that's my mistake. Mmm, that's annoying. Oh well. It's only a defender. But anyway, we have relativistic economics. Um, and I know we want to go right for our efficient shielding here so we can get that other class. And immediately I'm gonna try to sue for peace with this guy let's see. you can see this deal approval is more toward me but it's not completely toward me so I'm gonna offer this and see has been rejected we are not prepared to make peace with you more time in a neutral status is necessary before we are ready for this okay so this guy's an asshole basically he doesn't mind attacking us if we're in neutral territories um, but he doesn't he also doesn't mind if we go into peace at a later time, so I'm just gonna take my scout around and start looking at different star systems and seeing what we can find. Open up a lot of the map, and we took care of this notification. And so every now and then, I'm not sure if we keep asking him if that affects, if 
these out effects. And... Yeah, the other when we that that uh, technology that we just researched was for the ability to declare war and to offer or rather to sue for peace and offer peace. So if we were at war, we would be able to sue for peace. Okay, I think that's about it for now. How long is this thing going to take? Oh, okay, it has one more turn. It, it's been on there for a while, although we haven't taken many turns in this video. And we're almost out of time. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and finish that. Wow, that's a big sun over there. Red supergiant. Taurus seems to have one medium arctic with a negative anomaly on it. It does have a moon. Not, hmm, that's interesting. Deserted cities, plus one on planet. Huh. But not many resources there. And actually, did we look at this resource, virtual artifacts? I think we've seen that before. It's a good one. It's a very good one, especially for industry. Uh, did we have something like that? As no, that must have been in, in another game that I was playing. But let's continue on. We have eight. Nine. It won't reach this red super giant, all that, uh, yet. And I'm wondering how far the map goes. It must not be that far because we can't scroll over here. And we did complete a bunch of things. So on Silphi, we completed our defender. So we're going to create a fleet with him. We're going to send him up to Trine. And I'm not going to go... Th he cl <laughs> this guy, the pilgrims, clearly want to fuck shit up. <laughs> but they don't want to declare war, but they're fine with, you know, attacking if I'm in the neutral territory. And they have these ships to do it as well. I'm not sure if... How he... Well, he might have... He might have researched the, uh... That class early and then just loaded his ship full of kinetic that's probably what he did anyway dream finished its improvement for heavy isotope refineries so what can we do trade routes we don't really have trade set up right now we have we do have zero out of two routes and I'm not sure how trade works either well actually well I would assume it's hmm. let's take a look uh, let me see how much time I have left okay let's take a look at some trade stuff I guess that yeah diplomacy and trading mm -hmm. just trying to see ah okay so here's some we get more diplomatic options over here so we can trade a lot of things and we get open borders oh, what's this command points I don't know what command points do either like I said uh, like I said in this video and the last video I'm very very new to this game in fact I bought it yesterday and then just started the let's play at that point because I thought it'd be a good yeah you know learn as I play kind of experience so I don't know what command points do and what I should probably do is go back through my video once I recorded it and make notes of what I need to learn. That'd be good. That'd be a good thing to do. So we're all about improvement here on Let's Play Endless Space. And I'm, what I'm looking for is trade stuff. And I'm wondering if... So can you... Yeah, I just don't know. I'd like to speculate. You know, just because it's fun to speculate. So you see we have on Silphi, we have zero out of two roots. Um, so when we set up trade, does that mean we can only have two deals here for this strategic resource, for example? Or Yeah, I just don't know. Let's not speculate like a fool. Okay, and we do need to set up some more stuff, some more production. Um, let's not go with trade yet. Uh, let us go. We need production, but we already built the heavy isotope refineries. No, we are building the heavy isotope refineries. Why is it not showing up? Oh, we weren't zoomed in far enough. Lovely. All right. 
It's Sylphie and Treem that we need to queue up. Uh, okay, so what are we low on here? We are low on a little dust, but that's not really a problem right now with the amount of dust we're pulling in per turn. We could go with more science or more food. We are pulling in a lot of science, but science is very good. I do like science. For science, as they say. All right. And over here, hmm, we're not doing a lot of dust over here. It is, we get a, a minus 4.5 from our distance with Empire, which is another thing to take into account when we're expanding. And I'm assuming there's probably some kind of uh, research technology that we can, there's some kind of technology that we can research to improve that. For now, Let's go with, uh, this is ocean. Do we get ocean on this? Yes, we do get plus one there, but I mean, it's only plus one. Let's go with, yeah, let's just go with, uh, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. Let's go with the same thing that we're doing on Sylphi. Okay, we're good. We can fit in a couple more turns here. Let's see. Yeah, we got about five minutes left. Okay, so let's finish that. Bundus, terrible, terrible, tiny lava. That's absolutely terrible. We're gonna move right along. It's something that we're not even gonna look at. And we finished efficient shielding. So I think to finish out this video, let's choose another research. Um, we want to go with, let's see what we can do with them. Um, the trade stuff. So let's do relativistic markets. Actually, I am really planning on. Let's see. <laughs> let's see if he wants to be at peace yet. No, not yet. Okay, but it looks like he's not going to bother us as long as we stay out of his you know, territories, and we can always just retreat, not be an idiot, and wait for the friggin' battle to go into manual mode or to automatic mode. But. Uh, so I'm not going to go into uh, improving our military right now. I think I'm just going to go, we'll look at some trade stuff. So that'll be for that. Now to end the video, what I want to do is I want to create a new attack. You can name your ship design whatever you want. I'll just name it attack for now. We're going to make it a destroyer class. And we are going to fit it with lots of stuff. Now, I did notice that his, he didn't have a lot, uh, the pilgrims didn't have a lot of missile. In fact, they had no missiles at all. So I can just load this baby up. Now, the price does go up, but I mean, it's worth it because it's like, it's a heavy attack ship. So we got six ion torpedo me uh, modules. And let's see if we, how much we can throw on here. Actually, let's reset. Call this attack. I just want to see what happens if I auto upgrade. Huh. So it just gives us offensive cha uh, chaff, which is 100% interception accuracy on one missile per round times seven. So that's seven missiles. And it also gives us. Wow, that is really good. Let's call this one missile attack. This might be something we could. If, if the pilgrims don't want to be at peace with us, we might be able to just build up a couple of these babies and be able to smack them pretty well because their ships looked like they were mostly all kinetic, which is the melee phase. Missile phase is the first phase, so we could do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. And offensive chaff. So this is like a a range basically first round fighter this is this guy is going to absorb a lot of the missile damage and it's going to put out a lot of missile damage it's interesting i mean i could min max this you know right now i could take off all of this and just go with all iron torpedoes i suppose um which would be absolutely ridiculous but it would be very very powerful but it would be very susceptible to missile attacks or any any attack really. Um, but let's just 
let's keep it simple. I can min-max all day. Let's just do an auto upgrade. I think we have enough to. We have enough to just throw, you know, slap something else on here. More health. Sure, why not? And I think we're getting toward the end of the video, so I think I'll start to wrap it up. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this. This is our basically our long-range attacker. He has a good amount of military power, pretty good amount of HP. And he's very, very good with iron torpedoes. I might come back to that later. Um, and tweak it, maybe min-max it off-screen, and then just kind of tell you guys what I did. Okay, so that's the situation. We're going to start building those when we can. Uh, and maybe that'll allow us to explore over here without being hassled by this guy. In the next video, we'll try to make peace with the pilgrims. It's an interesting, <laughs> when you think of the context of that. Uh... Yeah, what I mean is Pilgrim's America. Yeah, you got it. It's a terrible analogy. Uh, all right, so I think I'm going to end the video there. Next time, we'll, you know, we'll do what I just said. I'm just reiterating at this point. All right, see you later.